Hello and welcome back to Intercollegiate Slippy. We have a banger of a matchup coming out for you. We've got Purdue versus William & Mary. I am Hada. I've been here a dozen times already. But fresh on the scene in the server, we've got the legendary YouTube content creator, Turn Down for Walt, joining us on the mic. Welcome, Walt. How you doing, dude? What's up, man? Uh, I mean, I'm going to pretend like we didn't talk 12 hours ago, so... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited to cast some melee. Big thanks for uh, you know for all the intercollegiate slippy guys for you know onboarding me so quick with everything. Uh, yeah, it looks like it'll be a pretty fun match. Um, I'm a little bit new to how how things are set up here, but this is just kind of like your standard crew battle, more or less five v five, right? Yes, sir. Um, cool. Do we have any ideas of? Uh, you know, have you seen these schools before? Do you know, you know, what to expect out of these people, or right. is it just all going to be fresh? Uh, this definitely sounds a little bit of uh, advantage for myself being a Midwest commentator. Um, I am a local commentator down from Cincinnati, Ohio, so I got to know the Indiana scene relatively well, being one of our uh, close neighbors. So definitely know Rye Guy. Rye Guy is an established Falco man, Falco man coming out, been out in the Indiana scene for as long as I can remember. And um, Purdue has been one of the go-to circuits and one of the go-to spots for Indiana Melee when it comes to not only hosting monthlies and major tournaments, but also being kind of a breeding ground for upper mid-level players. So this definitely is going to be a potentially hot lineup of um, maybe no, not too many weak players, but everyone's going to be definitely really solid and really practiced. And William cool. and Mary, I got the chance to commentate them a little bit earlier in the week. I was very impressed with Large Marge, the Ice Climbers player. A really great neutral coming out from them. Takashi, the Marth player, is pretty solid, as well as to the Sheep. NASA, I don't think played with us quite yet, so we'll have to see. So NASA already actually knocked, right? already knocking us in. NASA versus uh, Mask. All right, let's go. Cool. All right, so Massa, or NASA is the red port one, and then we got Mace on port two right now, and uh, NASA kind of just going in on him right now. Yeah, NASA already on a pretty big um, percentage advantage here, but it looks like we'll get that counter hit out of the shield pressure. He's going like to like to grab ledge and take the first stock of the crew battle. Cool, yeah, and of course, every stock just so, so important here. Mace not able to answer back right away, but really solid advantage state. We're going to see if he's able to pick up the pressure, but uh, NASA kind of resets neutral, and maybe we get a punish out of him. All right, Juicy Down Smash should get that recover, uh, refresh on that edge guard sequence, but it looks like NASA's doing a great job, you know, waiting out kind of like those typical Falco main timings that you're seeing, especially with the onslaught of new Falco mains coming out through the slippy era. Uh, so hurts. just holding that shield a couple beats longer than usual will break those initial options there. Yeah, and getting the, getting this uh, mace to such high percent and not finding a kill just yet really, really hurts, especially in the crew battle format right now, because, you know, every single little dink that uh, NASA can find on him, even this could be a stock too, and I think it is, uh, is just enormous. All right, so it looks like a 96% advantage here, but three stocks apiece. Let's see if this volatility can come and swing the way of mass and an early platform follow-up here for some ju little juicy percent here. 53, 66, already tacking it up, still going. Has a decent amount of pressure, corner pressure built up, but the reversal out of the corner. NASA will clean it up, but takes 89 to boot for it. Yeah, Mace kind of given a lot of respect on the side platforms right now. I'm not really sure if he's just not comfortable with, uh, you know, pressure on the side platforms. There we see a pretty solid back air obligatory commentary uh, mainstay right now to even up the stocks. Um, really good to reset back ne to neutral right now. And yeah, again, like just not pressuring at all uh, when NASA's is just jockeying on the top platform. All right, NASA already gets a little opening up himself. Gonna go ahead and put a little bit of pressure on Will Escape with that shield drop early up smash to try to get that combo break. Oh no! Uh, Mistake yeah, that's... to send him to his doom there off the bottom with that side that one beat. really, really hurts. This, you know, again, with the crew battle sort of thing, it's like you can shake this off if uh, you know you make the game and kind of bring it back for your team. But for the fact that it's a crew battle, that's a huge lost stock. You're gonna have to play with one now if you make the next game. All right, we'll get the runoff back or hit the tippy toes, get that shield poke with the refresh nice F coverage. smash with the punishing those really high double lasers. Really need to clean those up if your mask get that first laser nice and low to at least interrupt that option. 
solid pressure string here out of the two of them. Just barely missed times the down smash. Maybe half a step later, and we get there. Oh, I like that a lot. Oh my gosh, yeah, he he pushed him off with the uh, with the walk into him on the left platform, but didn't really amount to all that much. NASA kind of posed to poised to maybe take this game back. All right, NASA's working on a little bit of a percentage deficit here. Mass doing a great job chasing him down, but can't get the open up that he really needs. NASA's just slowing it down, playing a little bit more defensive, you know, looking for Mass to make a mistake here. That's it, that's it. That five flying downer will clean it up. Wow, okay, yeah. I was about to say, uh, NASA kind of flubbed. I think when he did the full hop bear out of shield, he wanted to full hop uh, shine bear. Like, do a Shine Bear out of shield, but he just misses the, uh, you know, the opener for that. Uh, didn't really matter. He closes it out, but like, like I was mentioning earlier, uh, when he SDs off the left side there, you know, there's a world where he has two stocks here going into this next game instead of one. So, you know, if you guys are uh, William and Mary, is that the one that, that just uh, won? NASA is the representative for William and Mary holding one down and sure. winning that juicy early counter pick advantage going forward. So Schwang will be the counter pick. So Marth versus one stock of Falco. So I okay. really don't like, I mean, they have two Marths, so it's not as bad, but you'll see a lot of people instinctively like knee jerk reaction. Oh, there's a space that's counter picking with Marth, even though it's just one stock. So what sure. I really yeah. would like to see is uh, maybe Charlie Wu or maybe Rye guy comes in, trades it stock for stock, or even just wins the first stock outright. And then it's way more difficult to counterpick them. So if you're looking at the side of William and Mary, they have a Sheik in the wings. They also have an Ice Climbers. If that Ice Climbers could be a Marth specialist, you're throwing in a Marth with someone who potentially has a lot of knowledge against in the Marth matchup. And you're right, yeah. Yourself. You have to look in, in the situations where you're only counterpicking for one or two stocks. You have to look at the potential next counterpick from the other team. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not only character and player counterpick, for instance, but you also get the stage, too, which is why momentum matters a lot. Um, you know, that's why that SD from NASA could have been really, really huge, all things considered. He makes it work overall uh, by getting this momentum early. Again, really huge. Um, but I, I totally agree. I think uh, there are two Marths on the Purdue side, so they have choice there if that's the case maybe they just don't want to risk the fact that like you know nasa can maybe find a stock or two off of one opening that that definitely could be the worrisome part of gambling maybe throwing, maybe throwing another space animal in the mix so definitely is something to consider but you know schwing um as you know as a midwest resident i've seen schwing in so many different tournament results definitely a mainstay in indiana melee so hoping that um this um this experience and um this long standing um especially with a lot there's a lot of strong falcos in the indiana region um lance in the pants formerly um number two sure. and number one and uh, the reprieve state number one in indiana rick um has a fox and a falco i think mostly playing falco nowadays as well uh rye guy of course and um, has a couple more uh falcos in the docket imder as well on the indiana pr as a falco man so lots of falco experience for the side of the um indiana crew so let's see how schwang can um navigate around nasa's last stock i'm gonna hop right in here sure. let's do it. absolutely yeah we're gonna be knocking down the stocks right now uh the thing that i'm kind of interested in later on in the crew battle is uh rocco is a marth that sounds familiar to me uh the name and i'm interested in seeing you know just play style wise like maybe where these two differ and like what would make them choose uh schwang over rocco in this situation all right, looks like we're hopping right in here. Laser damage already putting in a decent amount of pressure here. And instant shine up air. Big percentage advantage here already for 35% to 4. Shout outs to 4%. Dave percent on lock, but we'll get batted out of it with that grab follow up. Not quite there, but really solid spacing overall. All right, yeah, and this is kind of what I was saying earlier with NASA. Like, you know, if he can find one stock, that's a win overall, I think, for the team. But uh, it looks like Schwang's going to be able to grab a little bit of momentum right now, fighting out of the corner and just grabs, but just barely <laughs> misses the down air. Yeah, tries to call out the instant double jump with a double jump down air of his own. 
But um, we'll get the dash back grab here. Juicy second hit up there. Down tilt to cover it and refresh grab that. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a Marth versus Falco edge guard. If I've ever seen it. That was a, yeah, that was, I mean, that was, there was a world where NASA takes a stock there for sure. Um, I think there were just a few small, you know, like little mistakes here and there. Um, getting grabbed out of the corner by Marth is just like never a good feeling. So, you know, Schwang able, able to pull it out, even it out. And then uh, it looks like they're going to bring the Sheik in. So your prediction on that yeah. character slash player counter pick was correct. Yeah, they call me. I am the greatest crew battle coach of our generation. I'm just going to hold that in my heart of hearts. And because uh, no one has contested it yet. No one has told <laughs> me that they're better. So looks like the counter pick will come in to the Sheik player. Kind of an iconic name for the, you know, the wave dash sound from Sheik coming in. So um, two will come in. I was actually uh, actually pretty impressed um, by two Sheik in the last William and Mary set that I commentated. So let's see how okay. they um, can adjust here and maybe to, um, trade down on Schwang or maybe even straight up win it. Yeah, so you saw two playing. Uh, who were they playing against the last time? Um, I'm trying to remember um, what crew that they went in against. But um, I do believe that uh, two themselves traded up for you know five or six stocks for their four. I do remember oh, that they okay. had a very solid performance and was a a strong force for William and Mary. William and Mary actually surprised me a lot, most notably their ice climbers. So I'm really excited for those ice climbers to come out. Large cool. margin, I believe, took eight or nine stocks. And <laughs> um, so shout outs to Large Marge, by the way, um, especially with the um, the wobbling ban as well. So okay, yeah, that's what I was gonna ask also is what what the status is for uh, crews with ice climbers. But I guess that's an that answers that, and that makes it way more uh, impressive that he can find those stocks um, without the wobble. Yeah, um, and um, large march coming in in the chat, correcting me. Twelve stocks, putting some respect. My bad. Sorry, oh, shit. King. Okay. King, my bad. All you. <laughs> <laughs> Two is the best sheik in the world. Again, I, I I have yet to see someone um, uh, correct that <laughs> correct that assumption. I did mm -hmm. see Foxy Grandpa Sheik yesterday, and that one was pretty good. I've seen that Plup guy; he's also pretty good at Sheik. But you know, two is good too. We'll have to see. I've never seen them in the same split in the same um, on the same setup. So who knows? Maybe two is just better yeah. than all of them. And even uh, even stocks again, but the counter pick going to uh the chic right so we see fod here um how do you feel about this you know one of the probably one of the few full matches we'll get outside of just the beginning of a crew battle yeah definitely you know evening up the crew battles you know even stevens this is another chance for a crew to seize that counter pick advantage away so obviously two coming in with a stage counter pick here as well as the character kind of just waits out finds another grab here looks up for another platform follow up tries to get some more percent but uh, Schwang will find his way out of the corner here with that fastball upper and the refresh to chase him down with his forward air. Will Sammy stall into the taken stock? Yep, four stocks to three in favor of two. And it looks like uh, William and Mary going to kind of turn it back around, uh, perhaps taking a bigger lead right now, almost even in percents right now with the full stock lead to two. Uh, getting a little bit tough to see right now what's actually happening, but... It looks like we're going to follow up here. Uh, two finds a little bit of an F till here, push up into the right side corner pressure. Gets that juicy shield grab into up smash up air follow up. Big damage for the side of two. Will shake out again. Shark with that juicy hit of back air. Another follow up on that grab. refresh grab. Probably do it. Nice weight, too. Refresh off the. Wow, edge. okay. And, you know, just sends him all the way from coast to coast, left to right. Great little follow up from two to. Two, not on two stocks, but on four, but has taken two stocks away from their opponent. Yeah, and this is huge right now. You like, you really don't want to be Schwang right now in this position. Down two stocks for the crew just after evening it up for your team. But let's see what he got. Uh, and yeah, I don't interesting up throw there. Uh, but I guess he finds it either way. So, you know, pr still at a stock deficit, but definitely doable for Schwang. Two just ran across the stage. Empty turned around and to run across the stage again into dash tag. I've never seen a more confident empty movement in my whole life. 
All right, looking like some good little quarter pressure refreshes here. Tries to grab this ledge. Sammy stall for the invincibility refresh. Misses Ooh, he missed his dash. Grab. Unfortunate. Yeah, dash out of the corner is pretty rough when the Sheik's just going to hold down for that. And uh, that probably is the stock, but he, he back airs instead. I think he probably could have found the up air there, but, you know, no harm, no foul. Still finds it three stocks to one in favor of William and Mary. All right, two will clean that up here again. Just chasing him down. So much corner pressure oh. and presence oh. coming out from the Dreffen. Yeah, this is looking like the Dreffen read roll out of the corner on the platform. The Dreffening might be coming in, especially with these run up down smashes. Two might have taken some inspiration from old man Drew, but it uh, looks You're like maybe I'm reading playing. the drop through on the platform there. But you know, it doesn't really matter. It looks like because I think two's going to take this one. Two double Sammy stall. Wow. Refresh on the ledge and we'll hold it. And we'll take it really down. Solid. Clean. Two stocks left in the pocket for two. Yeah. <laughs> I guess uh yeah, no no play on words intended, but No, of course um, not. Um would never yeah, so... like that in the on this broadcast. <laughs> Advantage going back to William and Mary right now. Uh two stocks ahead and Purdue University is down to their last three players. Um, I believe it's a Marth and then a pair of space animals, Fox and Falco. So what do you think it comes in here? All right, looks like uh, Charlie Wu, the Fox player, will be popping in here for the side of Purdue. So Purdue okay. will send in um, probably their most stereotypical counter pick in, um, in Fox versus Sheik. So we have to look at the, honestly, the stage counter pick will be kind of more indicative of why the fox is coming in and uh, what their game plan is on how to deal with two's last right two fox. yeah so we got fox chic uh we're hearing from production that two is banning fd that that kind of makes sense overall um i mean if you're in fox's position yeah. i mean i feel like it's stadium that's kind of like the standard at least for like best of three best of five thing and i i think that's what was said to us in our ear as well so yeah, they are going to be going Pokemon Stadium, and yeah, I mean it should be it should make for an interesting game. Uh, it really is just going to be a matter of how uh, Charlie Wu plays at the corner versus two, because I'm wondering if two is kind of like the gimping type chic or just like the reaction tech chase type chic. I didn't really get a solid read on that over the last game. I did see, you know, I I was very impressed with two's micro movements. A lot of um like quick um, instant dash into pivot grab. Um, definitely some really confident platform movement. So I could see maybe those reaction tech chase plays coming in. So we'll have to see how much choose adaptation. And especially, you know, um, a, a issue the, with um, that was previously plagued a lot of crew battles before the slippy era was people who were coming off of a game had that little bit of competitive drive, had that little bit of adrenaline already pumping, that competitive spirit already pumping. If you Come in with a decent amount of stocks. You can keep that momentum going. So right, with two right. stocks in the pocket, let's see if um, if two can keep that energy going and um, at least try to extend the lead against Charlie Wu here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, gonna get rid of those the first two stocks, and I guess we'll get started on the neutral start. Probably around fifty, right? Yep. Right, we'll greet and each other right with those uh, crouches in place. And uh, all right, we have Charlie Wu really walling off with these up, up tilts. We're seeing a game plan already pretty established, but misses a grab, gets grabbed for his own right. Charge F smash on the new stack, dashes away from the get up attack, trying to put up a decent amount of percentage here. Goes for the jump read out of the corner. Let's see if two can get one more read into one more texture. It could lead into a stop. Reads it, Ow. tech chase in. So much damage for two. He can find this here too. That's really good. Just barely, probably didn't expect uh, Charlie to land on the right platform there. And Charlie's going to answer right back. And that could actually be a stock loss for two. And we thought that he was going to be the first one to take it. All right, looks like two with the pretty juicy reversal there. Will use that double jump to dodge the up air coming out from Charlie. Sneak under and change him down with an up air of himself. But as I'm saying, Charlie comes off the angel platform and takes it stock for stock here. Next big stock could bring lots of momentum for your crew. If Charlie can trade this down wow, to one so for two fast. stock trade. And that's a huge punish right there. You can't be recovering on stage, but the full hop aerial is just gonna get dash back grabbed and here comes two with the Gimp. 
All right, will find his way back with a sweet spot, That's but it. the up there, up there. Woo, pixel perfect so DI there. Great last opportunity here if you're two. Great shield on that up smash. Does not get the tech chase, however. You wake up, shine, so, such a strong option for countering those tech chases. Stage should probably do it at this point. And wow, that was insanely fast by Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. Really solid, solid fundamentals overall. Like, just kind of played the matchup the way he needed to play it. Didn't overextend on any risks that he needed to take and just kind of waited for two to mostly recover on stage to get all his punishes. Yeah, you know, Charlie um, had that practice edge guard flow chart with that um, full hop crossover uh, strong hit of back air. So Charlie um, definitely showing the bread and butters and has mitigated the the William and Mary lead simply just one stock. So we have a battle, ladies and gentlemen. We were at even stocks at the beginning, even stocks at 16, and borderline even stocks here at 12. Sure, yeah. and Okay, Top and it looks like we're going to have... Yeah, the Marth. I was going to say, actually, I felt like now would have been a good time to bring in that Ice Climbers player that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, though I wonder how... I mean, Charlie looked really solid against that kind of like mid-floaty, like Sheik's type character. So I wonder if maybe it's going to... It would have, wouldn't have would have translated well for that. But we got Takeshi the Marth coming in instead. And, uh, of course, the FD ban out of Charlie. All right, so Battlefield will be the pick Marth versus Fox. We've got the Altaian Prince of Legend from the Fire Emblem series versus the Volpine Astronaut in Fox McCloud from, of course, the Star Fox series. We have a Nintendo fighting game here. It's ridiculous that I've put so much time into commentating a Nintendo fighting game, but, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. Spending my um, good, hard-earned hours on my Valentine's Day hanging out with you guys, so... While we're loading in here, I want to remind everyone to please scroll to the bottom of the chat and use your channel points. Donate them back to the stream. We can win real cash prizes by doing so. At the end of our circuit, the top contributors back to the channel points donation drive will receive upwards of over $100 in actual cash prizes. So just by coming in and supporting the stream, you can win actual hard-earned cash. I didn't know that was a thing. That's really cool, actually, that you guys are doing that. <laughs> so. so we have that. And also, for more incentives to support the stream, sub channel subscribers earn 2.5 times the amount of channel points. True okay. story. So if you are a subscriber to the channel, you can have that instant advantage over all those competitors. So shout outs to uh, TZD, actually, who has been a subscriber a week longer than me and has already accrued a 1100 point gap between myself. And I'm basically a producer in the stream. Like what's going on here? You guys are a bunch of tryhards. But any <laughs> anyway, moving oh, forward, yeah. again, if one more little plug, if you have Twitch Prime, Twitch Prime, you get a free sub once per month. And if you use that here, this is a great deal, ladies and gentlemen. Perk those ears, I need you to listen. You can take $5 out of Jeff Bezos' wallet, put it in the wallet of Intercollegiate Slippy, and then earn 2.5 times the amount of points and earn actual cash prizes during the Intercollegiate Slippy circuit. So you're investing in your future for free and investing money into Intercollegiate Slippy and taking it out of the billionaires in the United States. How cool is that? Dude, that's stonks. Big stonks, hella stonks. That's, that's some Dogecoin. All right, speaking of Doge, we've got a fox on the screen. Takashi versus Charlie Wu. Let's hop right in here. And they went straight to Battlefield right now. Uh, solid SDI in the second up air doesn't extend the punish all that much, but on top of platforms with a fox below you isn't exactly where you want to be. Two of them resetting back to neutral, but Charlie just looks like he has a ton of pressure overall. Holy crap. Charlie is cooking, ladies and gentlemen. He's on that chase down. Edge canceling all over the platforms. Relentless not letting Takashi breathe. But Takashi has a grab follow up here. Early wow, what a read. No jump. But will find his way backstage. A Sakurai combo potential will get the dash back grab. Marth already on the chase here. Tries to go for that single hit of Saibi to continue the combo. A little bit of a neutral hop. Fair didn't get that knockdown. Great pivot through the body of Fox McCloud. Misses the shield drop up air off the continuation. Let's see if Charlie can find his way back to center stage. 115 stacked up from that combo extension. Went on left platform into Shine. Interesting choice there. But, you know, still finds it either way and still has his stock more importantly. 
What's the option here? Wow, kind of slightly misses misses the uh, ledge to mess up his uh, side B to stage recovery, and I think that messes Takeshi up just a little bit. This time he just gets the shorten instead. Oh, early hit of side B coming in for a little bit of a cheeky gimp, covering that aggressive option coming out from Charlie. So, oh, that's so risky, and he's, he should die for this. M2K, M2K. <sighs> Not quite. Great um, recovery coming out for Charlie. Early knockdown, finds another grab. Takeshi trying to find another big opening here. Down tilt. All over him. Oh, he, if he double jabbed, I think he would have had it. But... All right, trying to find one more big knockdown here. Takeshi showing some great proficiency off those early knockdowns. Dead, Downer, dead. Yes, yeah, there sir. we go. Wow, Takeshi's really just finding these openings right now. It's pretty insane. Um, Charlie should pick this up right here. Two stocks to one. Uh, overall pretty good right now. Charlie with six stocks under his belt, I think. All right, Charlie oh. with a little bit of continuation. Great grab out of the corner there. Tries to find out. Sharks him, no jump, no jump. Great aggressive fair. Reach into the jump. Hard. One more refresh here. He's dead. Oh, no, he's not. Okay. He's dead now. Wave dash on the ledge. Hit that R button, and we are back. Stock for stock here. Tap nine apiece. This will reclaim the advantage. We are going even stocks apiece. All the way through this crew battle, Purdue versus William and Mary is a hype set. Charlie playing it safe right now with a couple full hop area and uh, maybe misses the JC on that grab and he's getting punished for it pretty hard. Oh my God! <laughs> that early wave land to get that combo extension. Look, that's so smash good. him. He's dead. Yeah. Rutakashi, great job to cover. Do it. Oh, he's <laughs> aggressive with the down smash. Oh, we'll clean it up. Pushes forward oh, on the C grab up the edge guard. Dude, that the edge cancel up air off the top platform was insane. Oh my that god. Was such a creative extension that just gave him just enough percent and just enough um just enough like aerial mobility to continue off that combo. Great, like honestly, just a great pivot of ideas coming out from Takashi. Yeah, and, and, it, and it really felt like some of the earlier stocks, he had the right idea, but didn't quite get there on the execution. He put it he put it together on that last stock. It was insane. And I, I'm, you know, I'm glad that he gets to play for one more stock for whoever uh, Purdue brings in next. All right, Purdue. Rai Guy, the established Falco player coming in. Definitely um, a name I am more than familiar with. And they're going to save Rocco for their anchor here. Rai guy gonna come in into the last okay. stock of Takashi. So, hmm. looking how do you feel have, about this? I, I think it's perfectly fine. Um, uh, Takeshi, Takeshi, thank you so much. I love the phonetics. Thank you guys so much. If I'm saying something wrong, don't let me keep sounding stupid. Just let me know. Thank you so much, um, William and Mary underscore Mom. I'm assuming what the, that's what the WM will stand for. Really appreciate that. So, uh, Takeshi will um, have one stock left over and we're having to think you know we're having to look moving forward into the next counter picks because these are the deciding factors that will send our crew battle into who wins and who goes home a little salty so we yep, have yep. in the background we have large marge the ice climbers who i was very very impressed with you know 12 stocks they're crazy crazy strong um mm -hmm. really great neutral <clears throat> game a lot of great movement um and then veronica the fox player so looking forward um Looking forward, I think the Rai Guy pick is perfectly fine. You have two space animals left in the pocket, but it's sure. going to be up to giving, I believe, Large Marge the most success, um, best chance for success. So you need to send in Large Marge, whether they're more confident against Falco or whether they're more confident against Fox. So I believe that, at least on paper, that um, you want to save Large Marge to go in clean against that anchor in... Um, in Rocco, I believe. Sure, absolutely. And they still, William and Mary, of course, still has uh, Veronica, I believe, as well. So they have a whole second, third player to work with as well. Um, but I do think that after uh, Takeshi comes out, then Large Marge is most likely the pick. There would be at least my guess, kind of play it safe a little bit, take your Ice Climbers out, and then you can close it out with the Fox if need be. But... Let's see how uh, Takeshi holds up right now. One stock to Raigai's four, just barely holding on to a lead right now. Pokemon Stadium to pick. This is definitely a huge opportunity for Takeshi 
to extend and give their next player a huge advantage in the counter pick battle going into the wire here. So Ryguy, if you're from Purdue, you have to take this clean. One stock is such a huge advantage for William and Mary here. Just a little early on that up air. I think Takeshi could have been a bit more patient there after the throw. Maybe just force him onto the platform and see what happens and he might lose the stock for it. All right, Ryguy's still on this big corner refresh punish situation. Again, won't get that crouch cancel down smash to clank with that up there, up smash, that up B. And uh, we'll try to refresh here. You know, aggressive option does find, uh, to catch just find their way back into the corner. Run straight through yes, with that up, yes. the up there. Crazy movement. Takeshi's playing super, super disciplined though. I love that. Yes, oh, yes, absolutely. Hang on the ledge, hang on the ledge now. Just wait. Takeshi with the very aggressive fast oh, ball. Will that was so smart too. Stock, though. He Huge actually would have. Uh, he would have lived too, I think, because I don't. Ryguy wasn't actually light shielding there, mm -hmm. so he would have actually lived if he up beat. But because Ryguy was at zero, he was probably dead anyway. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh my gosh, I love that gimp so much. Yeah. So much respect for that gimp, especially in cruise. Take whatever you can get, man. That's exactly what I was saying. You know, you have to go for that. If you go for that one hard read and it pays off, you know. You know, whatever, you traded it, you know, you did your job, you got like, what, like six, seven stocks, you've already done your yeah. job. If you can tap it in, go for that one out of four option, go for that hard read on that fast fall fair, and it hits, oh man, huge Absolutely. advantage here, and large marge will be the counter pick coming into Ryga. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know, uh, I, saw, I did see someone in chat say, uh, like, large marge, like, LOL. Or like Ryguy against ICs. I don't know if like Ryguy is inexperienced against ICs or or if maybe Large Marge is just that good. Um, I don't know what to expect, but I mean, I think because you said twelve stocks, that's kind of a good place to start, you know. So um, Indiana does have a few ICs players, and there's definitely um a myriad of ICs players coming out from the greater Midwest, especially that Ohio, Illinois, Indiana area. We have uh, Frigid. There's of course Boyd, Papa. Um, there's um who's the there's another Neo Pittsburgh I, I see who's escaping me, um but there's plenty of uh, ice climbers practice to be had in the greater Midwest. I do not know. Oh, Frigid's the Falcon. I'm thinking of um who's the Chicago Ices? Coffee help. Chicago Ices that doesn't uh, wobble. Um, God, I don't, dude, I don't know. <laughs> help me. Fluid, yes. Oh fluid, yeah. Thank you. Fluid, <laughs> sick. Love me some fluid. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I can yell yeah, at coffee. Yeah, drink water, folks. <laughs> yeah, I can yell at coffee. I'm allowed to. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah. yeah, we have plenty of ice climbers in the greater Midwest area. Uh, Fluid mm -hmm. is honestly one of my favorite ice climbers to watch, period. Um, I actually got the chance to commentate not only a Fluid set, but Fluid versus Mango at Smash and Splash 4. Absolute uh, okay. banger of a set. Mango obviously showing his dominance against the um against the ice climbers in general but fluid definitely showing some sauce as well especially against one of the top three best players in the world but sure but cool set to go back and watch if you want to see one a non-wobbling icy's in a wobbling icy's meta but two also a mango set so right cool. so i guess the real question here is uh you know again what kind of experience does this uh purdue university team have against an ice climbers um i'm looking at i guess the lineup from earlier today that I believe you were commentating as well, and there are no ICs there. So I feel like Ice Climbers are a very, like, 0 to 100 type character. You can get 12 stocks like Large Marge did the last time you casted for him, or you can just get totally bopped. I don't really know where the in-between is going to be for uh, this character, and more importantly for what the opposing team's experience has against this character. And it's um it's very interesting idea because you know wobbling has considerably been banned from the majority of the country, mm -hmm. so a lot of ice climbers have either left the game or have switched characters because of this uh, big nerf to their character. So seeing another ice, he's holding it down. Not only is kind of a Ooh, subtle buff be, for their character, hurt. he's because actually of the dead. Oh, experience. oh, so close, damn. I was gonna say, uh, you know, Ryguy starting off with a lot of good pressure was very, very close to killing Nana. Could probably get it here just off of a quick wait. And that's gonna do it. Yeah, that's actually so huge. Um, 
for both sides actually when it comes to crews because you know you get the nana back if large marge actually wins on sopo and large marge already putting out um, a little bit of damage here just trying to needs to confirm get this um stock advantage back you know seven to seven we're tied up here ladies and just lizard desync does not release into a grab okay. lizard desync into f smash however great little follow-up there does not get the instant edge cancel so no true punish there looks like rai guy will so be a little bit of a fake wobble there man <laughs> kind of doing some work but um Looks like uh, the Ice Climbers are struggling again. You know, those, these lasers cutting off their wave dash timings and these wave dash speed is so jarring, especially if you're Ooh, large. Oh, no, player. he didn't want that. He wanted to up throw forward smash and kill him off the left side, probably. No, but, but still, you know, still either way, still finds the kill. Ooh, OK. Will not go all the way through. A little bit of damage with that early up smash, however. All right, right guy doing a great job patrolling the skies here, not letting Nana fall down easily. No jump for Nana. Just going to go ahead and pin down um, the other climber with lasers here. Again, one pop up oh, for Nana. Oh. Early fair from Nana putting in work. All right, right guy trying to struggle, find his way in. Does get a juicy split there. Main climber will fall down and two stocks apiece. We are duking it out here, ladies and gents, finding our last sense of supremacy here for their crew. Large Marge getting pillared absolutely all over the stage, but will get that combo breaker back there off the platform. This is on the forward smash right now, but finds the grab really good and the mash out there. <laughs> Doesn't go for anything. Okay. I try to find great early on um, down. Nice. Get that little shield poke, but the down throw into forward smash will put on a decent percent setup for this <gasps> edge guard. <gasps> he missed the fastball. <laughs> Just snaked it right back with that sweet spot. Rai guy with a second lease on life here. Tries to find a great hit on to a the back of climber here. Ooh, I think so. He actually could have up thrown there and potentially picked up the stock because if uh, if Raigai di's that Sopo up throw either platform, then you can just platform tech chase, and if he goes straight up, then you just F smash. Early grab follow up down throw again. Forward smash. Early probably not the type of throw setup he wanted. Uh, you probably would rather go for up throw into forward smash there when you're on the left side facing in towards the stage, but still finds the kill anyway. Big tech chase sequence coming out here from Large Marge. Just oh, gets legend. He's hitting Large Marge. Just gonna snake legend. That's <laughs> it. Huge. That was, yeah. Large Marge. I'm surprised he actually put that together at the end because uh, he he dropped a couple handoffs there, mm -hmm. but he still had so much corner pressure throughout that it didn't even matter. Uh, Large March taking it over Rye Guy, and uh, Purdue has to go to their last player, which is uh, Rocco. Rocco, the Marth player, will be the anchor here for Purdue University. Got to go in versus one stock of Large March and a full four of Veronica, which means... Large Marge has effectively given Veronica their choice in um, where they're going to take this uh, last game situation. Should Large Marge not just outright four stock Rocco? <laughs> you think that could happen? It, they're good. You know, Large Marge is good, man. I, I could see it happening. But, um, you know, <laughs> I'm seeing the copy pauses pop out. <laughs> Marge is crazy. Marge is large Marge, by the way. I could use his first name because we're tight like that. Yeah, I know William and Mary players, but it's whatever to me, LOL. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so Marth Ices, um, I wonder what the what this counter pick is from Rocco. I'm assuming he might want something smaller. I don't really think he needs to give that much space, like a Dreamland or anything like that. FD, probably not. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? You know, I think that you're know, going smaller, trying to interrupt, but I think it's um, it's less about, I think, the stage length, but more about Marth's ability to traverse platforms, especially because if you get pinned down by a lot of these Blizzard desyncs, it takes away a lot of Marth's onus and a lot of Marth's comfortability to maneuver in and out of their dash dance and then interrupt with down tilt. But it looks like their stage is going to be Yoshi's story. So looking for the yeah. early kills, we're gonna have to see how uh, Rocco can execute against the um, the early low percent ice climbers. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense too. You know, can kind of just decent can separate those climbers really easily. You get just like one random tipper. Throws are relatively safe when you're Marth against 
ICs because you can just kind of like throw pummel once and then uh, forward throw and it actually knocks the two of them apart. Um, there's a lot of really easy options that Marth has to basically win neutral and then Large Marge will have to work way harder to basically kind of read if uh, Rocco's going to go with like a forward air type approach or a down tilt. Either one really, really solid against the Ice Climbers as a neutral tool. You know, definitely looking like it will be a very volatile last stock coming out from Large March. Definitely there is the potential for an explosive start to see if you can blow up one stock really quickly or even go for a stock trade. But it's up to Rocco to stay strong, hold it down in neutral for two or three big neutral wins, and really take advantage of his disjointed sword to try to build some space between him and the Ice Climbers. Yeah, for sure. And the big thing is also going to be, uh, are we going to see... How quickly are we going to see Large March fall to the Sopo? Because, I mean, it should happen eventually. And then at that point, then, you know, neutral becomes really, really hard. Also, this uh, this stage texture, though, just want to say real quick. It's a good one, right? You know, we um, shout outs to our artists and our um, developers for giving us a great oh uh, set of reskins for our stages. I love the Piplup holding our, our logo on the stick in the back. All right, you know, doing yeah, March with a coming. really solid uh, handoff right off the gates, but, you know, Rocco's kind of re-establishing neutral right now, and we might see this game start to get away from him. Ooh, you know, Nana... Uh, yeah, that's where the grab is not safe. When you when you spend too long in that pummel, then uh, you can just desync to Nana, get the, the smash out. You have to throw basically right away to get the uh, separation. All right, now 69% was on the board, but it looks like Rocco will gonna have to... Wait for that. Kind of nice. corner here and that early F smash. Uh, wow, I can't believe he, pretty juicy. I can't believe he found that Nana F smash off of the uh, off the dash so quickly. But you know, again, this is what I was saying before. What? Such a good recovery. Oh my what god. A sick recovery. If, if Large Marge takes a stock off this, greatest ice he's wearing alive. One more. It looks pretty oh, rich. Yeah. Crazy. That oh, was so man. cool. Okay. That was insane. <laughs> Yeah, no, solid solid showing still. What was that? Five stocks out of large march? Five or five four? Five stocks out of um, probably you know, their two best players. Did what he needed to do overall. So now we got uh, last person, Veronica, with a one stock lead versus Rocco. Uh, and the stage I, pick. Yeah, not a lot to say off of just a single stock out of Rocco. I don't really know what type of momentum he's going to be carrying into this game. But... Yeah, I mean, he played he played that stock as well as he could have, had, having lost one to uh, Marge's Ice Climbers, especially off of uh, a few really solid neutral wins. I love the chat right now. The chat's savage. Good luck, Veronica. I know you're our worst player, but I believe in you. You're going marry mom. <laughs> no, that's mean. That's <laughs> mean. <laughs> oh, I love our disc Discord quote of the day. Let's see. So I'm um, trying to get a little zoom in on this real quick uh let's see here um okay code uh august <laughs> 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 uh, <okay>. seven eight eight um <laughs> yep, nice great use of emotes there from our players in the discord if you guys guys we have a lot of fun over here obviously like uh production likes to uh mess with us in our ears kind of make fun of us while we're commentating like to put up our discord quote of the day if you guys want to take part and join the um the slippy intercollegiate slippy community please join our discord come in if you have um, a team or a school that plays melee or even if you don't you know maybe this is the, the easiest way for you to start up a melee community at your own university on your own it only takes one person to start a movement and that could be you so please come in and if you're not a player, if you want to learn to commentate, I am more than happy to help you and connect you with our commentary community. I'm also offering free, yes, I said free, commentary, review, and coaching. This is the best time to uh, start your career as a commentator as well. There are weeklies every single day throughout the country. All you need is access to Discord, a mic, and a camera from time to time. And I'm more than happy to help you guys get started. Damn. Right, ahead and <laughs> right here. <laughs> Sorry, I had to I had to plug for a second. No, you um, had me sold on that one right now. I had a <laughs> jaw on the floor, dude. <laughs> I, I want whatever you're selling, dude. Shit, when do I get to go? <laughs> yeah, hey, turn down for Walt seal of approval. That guy has um <laughs> has some commas in his sub count on YouTube. Guys, go sub and ring that bell on 
YouTube.com slash turndown yeah, for all you make some sick content. Ring that bell. Only hot boys ring that bell. <laughs> but speaking of some good content right now, we got our last match of the evening. One stock advantage for Veronica and William and Mary University, poised to potentially take the crew battle. All right, looks like Veronica's already on some huge corner pressure, just not quite seal away the stock with that up throw up there. But um, a little bit of a little tippy tap with that dash tag, try to keep the corner pressure Love up. the restraint there too, just gives him all the room in the world. And Veronica looking like the worst player on William and Mary right now by a True, large margin. you know, only the bad players <laughs> take stocks really clean as the anchor roll. So it looks like Veronica already on a pretty decent chase down into the corner pressure, but great reversal there from Rocka, but will not seal away the stock. Wow, uh, nice into grab. Dash grab, crazy from Veronica. So sick. Oh my gosh. So fast. All right, jab, double jab, shine. We'll break out the corner pressure. Down smash to cover both those options. We'll get the knockdown, but Veronica already on a pretty decent follow up chase here. Dash tack for the pop up, a great wiggle out into neutral fall. Gonna find out some pretty decent room. We'll get that grab in the corner. Tri quadruple mark down till G. Oh my god. Into so the thing that R always gets me nervous is like, you know, when I play spaces, there's always a point after a stock or two where I run out of steam. And I don't know if Veronica's the type of player to get to that point, but we got to see if Rocco has like the mental poise to be able to take a basically four stock Veronica at this point. Yeah, Veronica playing, cooking with gasoline, if I'm honest. Veronica, are you looking up, looking for that third time to punish that early shield drop with up smash? But again, finds an opening here. Taking can Veronica take the next opening to the victory smash screen. in neutral? Uh, you know he's exploring some options right now. I respect it. All right, we'll go for that side B combo. We'll get some percent off at 121 to 62 percent, but huge. Enormous uh, okay. stock deficit here. Rocco nice. will get their first stock deleted by that tech chase upbeat. Rocco looking for some creamy Gouda in the corner here. Just misses the up air entirely, but still takes advantage right now. Up there, this up is there brutal. That's got to do it, right? And us home. JV wow. four stock to take the win for William and Mary Veronica. Poised in the clutch ready to take us home to the victory screen william and mary will win it by three stocks to purdue yeah University. seriously they they saved their worst for last by by a lot so yeah. and it's good they did it that way honestly like i think you probably need your worst player at that point yeah i mean if you if you send in a good player you just lose that there i've never right, seen a good right. player win that situation in my whole life yeah william and mary though taking it uh over purdue Really solid overall. I, I think that it was a lot of good back and forth right now. William and Mary just kind of pulling away a little bit towards the end there. And then uh, Veronica just absolutely taking it home. Yeah. So again, shout outs to William and Mary. And, you know, really great crew battle in general. Purdue and William and Mary duking it out back and forth, back and forth. One stock advantage, one stock advantage here. Back and forth. Shout outs to that amazing set of melee. Huge ups to the Indiana community and to the William and Mary community for showing up not only on the gameplay, but in the chat, supporting your fellow compatriots while they're playing. It's really cool to see all the support coming in and so much interaction coming out. It really feels like we're sitting at those um, those melee game setups and you're hearing in the background all the people from your locals cheering for your college kids. Really, love Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the entire format, big props to you guys overall. Um, just so so accessible. That's like the coolest thing about like crew battles is one of my favorite formats overall. And I think that just being able to just kind of like do one on the fly because of what uh, Slippy has enabled is really, really sick. So, you know, shout outs to you guys for putting it all together. Of course, shout outs to Fizzy for just being the goat. Um, yeah, no, really solid crew battle. I'm excited to see more out of this.